The 1970s had quite a few television shows that became super popular. Many of them became household names, and they also had phrases that everyone repeated all of the time. These shows define the decade, and they are still pretty entertaining today. In this video, we will have a look back on some of the more popular shows of the 1970s. Sanford and Son was a groundbreaking sitcom that was on the air from 1972 to 1977. It was created by Norman Lear, and the two main stars were Red Fox and Damon Wilson. The show was about a junk dealer named Fred Sanford who runs roughshod over his son and partner, Lamont. Fred's money-making schemes routinely backfire, and he does just about anything to get out of working, up to and including faking a heart attack. He's rude, sarcastic, outspoken, and overtly prejudiced, and pretty darn nasty to his friends and family. Taxi was a Emmy-winning sitcom that followed the lives of a group of cabbies in New York. The employees of the Sunshine Cab Company are a motley crew, including frustrated actor Bobby, struggling boxer Tony, art gallery receptionist Elaine, and tyrannical dispatcher Louie. Most everyone viewed the cab company as just a temporary job that could be left behind when they finally made it big in their chosen profession. The core of the company is Alex, who is sure he will be driving a cab for the rest of his life. Burned out hippie minister Reverend Jim and mechanic Lotka Gravis round out the group. The show ran from 1978 to 1983 and had several actors that went on to other projects. They were Danny DeVito, Tony Danza, Christopher Lloyd, Andy Kaufman, Carol Kane, Marilyn Henner, and Judd Hirsch, just to name a few. The Six Million Dollar Man starred Lee Majors as Steve Austin, an astronaut who is seriously injured after his spaceship crashes. Austin then undergoes a government-sanctioned surgery, which rebuilds several of Steve's body parts with machine parts making him cyborg-like. Following his recovery, the machine parts enable him to have superhuman strength, speed, as well as other powers. Austin then goes to work for the Office of Scientific Information, battling evil for the good of mankind. The show was on the air from 1973 to 1978. The Jeffersons aired on television from 1975 to 1985 and starred Sherman Hemsley and Isabel Sanford. This show was a spin-off from All in the Family, and it was about a black couple named George and Louise Jefferson who moved to a swanky high-rise building. George is often a rude guy who thinks his wealth should get him anywhere he wants to go. His wife is more level-headed, and she cuts him down to size when his schemes go awry. Little House on the Prairie was on the air from 1974 to 1983 and starred Michael Landon. It was based on Laurel Engle Wilder's series of Little House books and it revolved around the 1870s adventures of the Engles family who owned a farm in Walnut Grove, Minnesota. As the years went by, their oldest daughter Mary lost her eyesight and moved away to teach school for the blind. The Engles family moved to the Dakota Territory and back. The middle daughter and narrator Laura met Almanzo Wilder, who would ultimately become her husband. During the ninth and final season, the parents Charles and Caroline sold their farm and moved away, leaving Laura and her husband in Walnut Grove. Laverne and Shirley was a sitcom that was on the air from 1976 to 1983. The show starred Penny Marshall as Laverne and Cindy Williams as Shirley. It was about two best friends that were roommates and polar opposites that worked together in a fictitious Schatz brewery in Milwaukee. Together they kept each other's spirits up for the first several seasons. But after losing their jobs at Schatz, the pair moved to Burbank, California in season six in order to get a fresh start and break into the movie business. Many of their friends and family were inspired by the two women and they decided to move to California as well. Laverne and Shirley also made some new friends as well, including Sonny the Stuntman and Rhonda who was a model. Mork and Mindy was a sitcom that was on the air from 1978 to 1982. This was a spin-off from the show Happy Days and it starred Robin Williams as Mork in one of his early roles. Mork was an alien from the planet Ork and he was on a mission to Earth to study human behavior. He travels to Boulder, Colorado in an egg-shaped spacecraft and meets up with Mindy, who is a young journalism graduate. 
This bumbling alien is trying to get a handle on Earth culture, and he shares his findings in his frequent dispatches back to his home planet. The Carol Burnett Show aired on television from 1967 to 1978. The main star was Carol Burnett, but there was also Harvey Korman, Lyle Wagner, Vicki Lawrence, and Tim Conway. Carol Burnett is a comedian and stage actress who first gained popularity during her stint on The Gary Moore Show. She then hosted her own one-hour variety show. She had numerous skits and talent on the show, but her sketch The Family was later spun off into its own sitcom. The Mary Tyler Moore Show appeared on television from 1970 to 1977. Mary Tyler Moore, who played Mary Richards, was a 30-something single woman who settles in Minneapolis after breaking up with her boyfriend. She then lands a job as an associate producer of the Evening News, which happens to be the area's lowest rated station. Her boss, Lou Grant, hates her spunk, but often looks to her to solve newsroom and personal problems. Mary's other co-workers include news writer Murray Slaughter, egomaniacal anchorman Ted Baxter, and happy homemaker Sue Ann Nivens. Mary lives in a modest studio apartment, and her upstairs neighbor Rhonda Morgenstern quickly becomes a good friend. Later in the series, Mary moves to a plush high-rise apartment before leaving Minneapolis and the station for good. The Brady Bunch was never a hugely popular show when it was on the air from 1969 to 1974. However, there were people who loved it and it became really popular during syndication. The show was about an architect widower named Brady and his three sons who ended up becoming a bigger family when he married Carol with her three daughters. They also have a wacky maid named Alice and all of them live in a four-bedroom, two-bath home in the Los Angeles suburbs. The episodes deal with everything from boy problems, sharing bathrooms, attempts at music stardom, as well as the occasional football to the nose. They also have some pretty adventurous vacations in Hawaii and the Grand Canyon. Charlie's Angels was a show that aired on television from 1976 to 1981. It featured three beautiful police academy trained private detectives whose case always required them to don bikinis, evening gowns, or other sexy clothing. The unseen Charlie relays instructions via speakerphone. The original three actresses were Kate Jackson, Jacqueline Smith, and Farrah Fawcett. Farrah left after the first season but was replaced by Cheryl Ladd. Anyone who ever watched the show always had their favorite angel. Who was your favorite? All in the Family appeared on television from 1971 to 1979. The series has always been touted as a show that brought reality to primetime entertainment. Archie Bunker, played by Carol O'Connor, is a loudmouth, uneducated bigot who believes in every stereotype that he has ever heard. His wife, Edith, is played by Jean Stapleton. She's sweet, but not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. Their daughter Gloria was played by Sally Struthers, and her husband Mike was played by Rob Reiner. All four of them live in a working-class home, and Archie can't avoid his son-in-law, which he calls Meathead because he's an unemployed student and of Polish descent. The Jeffersons are a black family that lives next door. Edith's cousin Maude is a feminist, and his partners in a local tavern are Jewish. When you mix all of this together, you can certainly understand why this type of show will never be on the air again. Happy Days was on the air from 1974 to 1984. However, the show was set back in the 1950s and 1960s in Milwaukee. This series tells the story of the Cunningham family. Father Howard owns a hardware store while Marion stays at home. The son Richie's best friends are Potsy and Ralph. Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli is the local bad boy riding a motorcycle and filling his days with fixing cars and dating girls. During the show's run, Richie leaves home to join the U.S. Army. The show made household names of those who starred in it like Ron Howard, Henry Winkler, Tom Bosley, and Marion Ross. MASH came on the air in 1972 and went off the air in 1983. The show was about the members of the 477th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital that cared for the injured during the Korean War while using humor to escape the horrors and depression of the situation. The funny thing about this show is that it lasted for far more years than the actual Korean War was. 
This is another show where the characters, actors, and actresses became household names. Alan Alda played Captain Benjamin Hawkeye Pierce, and Mike Farrell played Captain B.J. Honeycutt. Gary Berghoff played Corporal Walter Radar O'Reilly, and Loretta Swit played Major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan. The show was filled with numerous other characters that you might also remember. Who can forget Corporal Maxwell Klinger, played by Jamie Farr? Three's company first came on the air in 1977 and went off the air in 1984. It starred John Ritter, Joyce DeWitt, Suzanne Somers, Don Knotts, and Richard Klein. Basically, the show is about two single girls that need a roommate to share their Santa Monica apartment. They then decide to offer a room to a guy that they found passed out in a bathtub after a going away party for their last roommate. That's when the hijinks ensue. Good Times was on the television from 1974 to 1979. Florida Evans, played by Esther Rall, and James Evans, played by John Amos, are a couple that are struggling to raise their kids in a Chicago housing project. J.J., played by Jimmy Walker, became super famous for his phrase, dino -mite. He was their impressive artistic son, and they had the voice of reason with their daughter Thelma, as well as their politically active son, Michael. These television shows are now a part of pop culture, but for many of us, they became part of our lives. You might not see them on regular television, but there are certainly still ways to view them. If by chance you have never seen one of these shows, then you should give them a try. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy them. What was your favorite show from the 1970s? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.